Inflation Reduction Act at the White House today. The bill is expected to supersize the IRS $80 billion, multiplying the size or the annual budget of the IRS. That money spent toward enhancing tax enforcement. Enhancing? We're using that word now? Hiring an additional 87,000 new agents. Joining me now, National Taxpayers Union Executive Vice President Brandon Arnold. Brandon, good to see you. Even the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, who oversees the IRS, uh, recently admitted, uh, she wrote that the agency's commissioner last week to clarify the funding plan, but it's an admission in which she said that the money will go toward auditing people who um, make less than $400,000 a year. Yeah, I mean, the legislative language is advisory in nature. It's non-binding. It says, let's not do, let's not affect those people. Let's not audit them. And Republicans in the Senate in particular tried to strengthen that language. They introduced an amendment saying no additional audits for people making less than $400,000, unanimously rejected by Democrats, of course. But here's the kicker. Had they passed that, according to the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, it would have had a $20 billion impact on the cost of the bill. So you're, how can a provision that has no impact to the amount of audits, according to Democrats, have a $20 billion impact, according to the CBO? It just doesn't make sense if you believe the Democrats. Here's what Janet Yellen wrote. Um, and Liz, I'll get your reaction to this. She said the $80 billion, quote, shall not be used to increase the share of small business or households below the $400,000 threshold that are audited. And the journal wrote about this yesterday. Yellen is promising only that new audits won't be directed disproportionately at the middle class, but she didn't dispute that thousands more middle class and low income earners will face scrutiny. Liz. Yeah, I mean, look, it's very slippery language, but the bottom line is there's no way that 87,000 new agents uh, conjuring up the kind of money that the Democrats are assuming can only go after very wealthy people in this country. And by the way, a substantial portion of very wealthy people already are being audited. So unless these people are like super snoops and have, have powers better than the average IRS agent, they're going to obviously have to broaden out their investigations into all income categories. I, and I, 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 I'm wondering whether our guest this morning thinks that, that, that the numbers are at all realistic for what the IRS can actually recover by amping up their numbers like this? That's a great question. You know, the, 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 the question is, you know, how much juice can you get out of a lemon? And the answer is, how hard right. are you willing to squeeze? So how hard are they willing to squeeze taxpayers? You know, right now, I think the most likely course of action here is an increase in audits, of course, but it's also an increase in the number of letters that they send off to small businesses, taxpayers of all economic backgrounds, saying, hey, we found something that we find suspicious or something that doesn't match up to the numbers that we have on record for you. We think you owe an extra 200 bucks, an extra two thousand dollars, whatever that number is. And a lot of taxpayers don't want to fight the IRS. They don't have the time. They don't have the money to fight the IRS. So they'll roll over and pay those relatively small amounts. And that'll squeeze a lot of money out of taxpayers just by harassment. Mm -hmm. Even if the IRS happens to be wrong in these instances and the taxpayers are 100 percent in the right, they're going to see some revenue gains from that. The Democrats are still sticking to the claim that the middle class won't feel the impact of a beefed up IRS. But again, Janet Yellen has said otherwise. The Congressional Budget Office has said otherwise. Mark Tepper. Yeah, and the, and the Joint Committee on Taxation says that 78 to 90 percent of the revenues are going to come from small businesses making less than 200,000 a year. So that, that sounds like less than 400,000 to me. Uh, Brandon, quick question to you. Where's the IRS going to find in, in today's job market with a three and a half percent unemployment rate? Where's the IRS going to find 87,000 people who can fog a mirror, let alone have a vast understanding of the most complicated code in the United States? Well, yeah, that's another great question because the IRS is actually trying to hire people as we speak, and they've done miserably at it. They're uh, way behind on their hiring targets that they started this year with, in part trying to close some of this taxpayer uh, uh, assistance gap that they have because they're they're doing uh, such a horrible job in answering the phones. It takes them eight months to get back to people if you write them a letter asking a question about a tax issue that you may have. So they're trying to address that because our, the uh, Congress gave them $2 billion, but they've done a lousy job not only of uh, helping taxpayers, but also of bringing more staff on board. The notion that they can hire 87 
1,000 uh, new individuals, even over the course of several years, is highly suspicious. Brenda, this is the very definition of big government getting bigger and that a, a waste of resources, that $80 billion is going to expand the IRS. Again, I, people who are conservative, it's who do you think makes better decisions with your money and about your life and your health care? Is it you or is it some bureaucrat or some politician? And this is, a, a, it's going the wrong way. Just final word. Yeah, I mean, the, the funny thing, we're getting a, a, re, a pushback from the, the left right now saying it's not 87,000 new agents, it's 87,000 new IRS employees. They're not necessarily agents, and I find that ridiculous. We know this is the federal government. A number of these people are going to be sleeping at their desks or streaming Netflix during the day. But the fact is they're growing the government, they're growing the reach of the government, and they're growing the impact that the government is going to have on small businesses and taxpayers of all stripes on a regular basis. Because this monstrosity has now been passed and will be signed into law today. We're actually hoping that these people don't do anything, that they do just sit around and watch Netflix. That's, that's the, the best case scenario, sadly. Brand, Brandon Arnold, great to see you. Thank you so much. We'll be Thanks, right Dan. back.